All right, guys, we're going to start in one minute. If you can, make sure that you uh, mute your computer so we don't have any background. I'll mute everybody. Actually, I'll just mute everybody right now. But, Jeff, make sure you unmute yourself when you're ready to talk. Got it. It's all right. All right, let's get started. Northeast region, it's so good to see all of your beautiful faces. Thank you for taking time to join us this evening. We are so lucky. We have uh, the one and only Jeff Hill. <laughs> I feel like we should maybe clap our hands or sing a song. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a great day. Um, but before we turn it over to Jeff, we've got, what, like 30, 45 minutes of announcements, and then we'll leave the net last 10 minutes for Jeff. Um, really quickly, you guys were all invited because you are registered for Team Cup. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, Team Cup is going to be amazing. And hopefully, we know you guys are registered, but our challenge to you is to make sure that your team, all of your coaches are on a Team Cup team. And really, if you have diamonds, make sure that 80%, if not, if not greater, of your diamonds are on a Team Cup. Um, you know, stress the importance. We know you guys know the importance of Team Cup, but really stress the importance um, with all your coaches get them on a team and more importantly don't stop there really push your coaches to stay engaged the entire month and you know it's great to be on a team but it's more important to push and and work hard the entire month to try to achieve something great so reach out to all your coaches make sure that they're on a team cup team you have until the end of the month and team cup starts January or February 1st um, really quick, let's talk about NLC. Um, we were just got back from NLC, and Lacey's going to talk briefly about that with us. What are you doing? Okay, guys, we just got back from NLC event. Oh my heavens, we were able to spend time with Carl Deichler, with Jeff Hill, with Michael Neiman. It was so much fun. We were able to work out with Tony Horton doing the, doing the new hardcore workout, which was awesome. The coaches were able to be trained by top coaches. Melanie Mitro was there, Bonnie Engel, Michelle Myers. We've heard nothing but amazing, great feedback from all the coaches. I know all my coaches I've talked to, they left inspired, motivated. They're ready to kill 2016. So if you weren't invited to this conference this year, do everything you can to get invited next year. And leaders, make sure your upcoming leaders know how important that event is and how much they'll be able to take away. All right, awesome. Uh, Okay. All, All right. right. Yeah, yeah, NLC was great. It was fun to be with a lot of you. I know a lot of you guys on this call tonight were at NLC, and it was a great time. It was great to see you in person and spend some time with you. Um, all right. You guys aren't here to hear us talk. You're here to, to hear from Jeff Hill. We're excited that, that he has taken time out of his busy day to be with us. Um, we are lucky here in our office. We get to, to work and be around him each and every day. Um, yeah, I got my voice back. Um, you know, what, the, one thing I can say about Jeff is, first of all, he has a great name. Um, but second, he's the kind of person that when you're around him, he, he, he makes you want to be better. And I know that when he talks and when he trains and he works with us, he makes us want to be, be better. And that's probably the, the best thing that I could say about him. Um, because of him, I, I really strive to, to be a better person. And I always leave inspired. I don't know if you guys have heard him speak before. Um, he just has a way of really connecting and inspiring and motivating people. So we're luck lucky to have him today. So Jeff, having said that, um, enough of the mushy stuff. He does have a big head. We don't want to build him up too much. Let's turn the time over to the one and only Jeff Hill. <laughs> well, thank you, Jeff. Uh, I do love your name. Um, uh, seriously, I think one of the, before, before I go any further, one of the great parts for me really is the fact that um, it, it's great to work with good people. Uh, it, it's great to work with people that you care for, that you like, that you respect. And I have the opportunity to work with Jeff and Lacey and 
Uh, Darwin's out today. Uh, another Jeff. Uh, I don't know how you know him, if you know him by Jeff or you know him by Darwin or Darlin or, or whatever. But uh, we have a joke in the office one time where he just says, call me Darlin. So I end up calling Darlin. Nothing going on. Nothing going on. Just, you know, just a kind of a fun deal. But listen, um, I, I do appreciate the opportunity to jump on this call. And uh, it, it, it's always this cool thing, these Zoom calls. I hate them and I love them. I hate them because I know you guys can, you, you look at me on this thing. So I'm not sure that I like that that so much. Um, but I love the fact that I can look at you. And, and, and I can see what's kind of going on a little bit, get a little peek into your world. You know, I mean, I'm sitting here looking at Sandra or Sandra, I don't ever, you know, and, and, and Hannah and Carrie and, and, and Audrey and Candace. And yeah, I mean, I could go down all these coaches and, and I'm looking at you guys. I'm looking at you guys in the eyes. And, and for me, so Audrey Robus, I can tell if you're falling asleep or not. I can tell if you're taking notes or if you're just totally tuned out, you know, or, or whatever you're doing. But it's, but it's great to be part of to be part of that. So thanks for letting me be on this call. So, um, you know, Jeff, Jeff said something that um, is probably not a bunch of stuff he said about me that's not true. But, um, but one thing he said is that, you know, that I, that I can motivate you. You know, I, I can give you some tidbits. I can give you some information. Um, but at the end of the day, you've got to motivate yourself. You've got to take that and you've got to put those things into action and, and do something with it. So, you know, if I could, you'll hear me use this term a lot. If I could take my magic wand and if I could wave it, you know, over each one of you guys, it would be that, you know, that you'll take something from this call, maybe just one thing and you'll, you'll use it to make yourself better. And there's, there's a Jiffy loop quote that says, um, we don't want to change your oil. We don't want to change your world. We just want to change your oil. You know, and, and, and honestly, that's kind of the purpose of this call. I mean, you know, I'd love to change your world, but it's you that's got to change your world. But I would like to give you something that will change your oil, you know, where you can go run a little faster, jump a little bit higher, have a little bit more thought, elevate the level of performance that you have as, as a coach. So with that, I'm going to jump in. You know, we've got about 20 minutes, and you'll see me. I'm looking at the clock over here because I have a call right at whatever, at, 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 at the at, – I guess for me, 5.30 anyway. So about, well, a long time ago, I attended a convention, and there was a guy by the name of Dr. Ken Dykewald who spoke, and he was a gerontologist, psychologist, futurist, and what he, there's probably a condensed word for that, you know, some kind of title, but he was a smart guy who looked down the road for, for what the aging population could anticipate and what that provided. At the very beginning of his, of his, of his talk, and there's backing up one step first i'm going to i'm going to touch on three three little things here that i three little stories um he asked this question he said how do you catch an elephant okay and and i don't know about you but i haven't spent or hadn't up to that point in my life spent a lot of time pondering the question of how to catch an elephant maybe it's because i didn't really have need for an elephant in my life i don't know what it was but as i was pondering he answered the question and he said this he said, he says, you don't run up from behind and try and catch it. You get out in front of it and you dig a hole big enough for it to fall in. Okay. You get out in front of it and dig a hole big enough for it to fall in. Second little story. One of the greatest hockey players, you guys in the Northeast are hockey fans, Grain Gretzky. Okay, uh, one of the greatest guys ever to slap on skates and skate the earth. And, and, and he was asked a question, and I thought his simplicity in his answer was, was so key. They asked him, what is your key to success? And he answered, be where the puck is going to be. Be where the puck is going to be. Okay, then third, I, I usually can't talk too much without talking a little bit about my family. Many of you know I have a big family. We have... We have six daughters, have a son. Uh, most of them are kind of grown up by now. But, you know, I had these, what I like to call teaching moments. They probably would call them lectures, okay? And, and oftentimes they would, they would surround the six Ps, okay? And when these, this, this teaching moment, as I like to call it, would typically take place, would be about 8 o'clock, 8.30 on Sunday evening. And it was when they would inform me um, that they needed to have the equivalent of a doctoral thesis uh, prepared and handed in Monday morning at eight o'clock in the morning. And it's like, what? 
I don't know if any of your parents or not, I've got kids that are of that age yet, but it's like, so then we pull this whole nighter, you know, kind of where I would write their papers, I would help them with this kind of stuff. And that's where the six Ps, the lecture around six Ps would come in. Prior proper planning prevents poor performance. Prior proper planning prevents poor performance. So now you guys are saying, okay, neat, Jeff, you've talked to us about elephants, you've talked about you know, about, about pucks, hockey, and you've talked about this, the six Ps. What have they got to do with me as a leader in elevating my level of, of leadership? Well, here's the deal. When Ken Dykewald was talking about digging a hole big enough to get in front or to, to, to capture an elephant, he wasn't talking about elephants, right? What he was talking about was the best way to capture and to leverage great opportunities that come to play in your lifetime, personal, professional, whatever those are. Okay. The whole story around Wayne Gretzky, his secret to success. Okay. Remember that concept that success leaves clues? Okay. Here's a guy, best in the world, greatest in his profession, one, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, okay, in his profession. His key to success was anticipate where the puck was going to be, where the opportunity was going to be, and be there. Understand what it looks like, what it feels like, where it's going to be, and prepare yourself to be there. The six Ps, hopefully, are, are pretty self-explanatory, I think, with a little bit of an emphasis on the first three. Prior, proper planning. So the real question is, as you contemplate those as a leader, are you, are you using those principles to put in play into your business? Now, backing up for a minute, I know that I'm preaching to the choir, so to speak. I'm, I'm talking to people that are engaged in our business, that you're signed up for Team Cup, you're on a, on a Team Cup team, but I'm talking to Beachbody guys, and yeah, I get that I'm a corporate guy, and I'm supposed to drink the Kool-Aid, right? Okay. Well, as a matter of fact, I do drink the Kool-Aid. Okay. I like the Kool-Aid and I happen to believe deeply in the Kool-Aid that we offer. And I, and I don't mean that to be demeaning at all about who we are because I happen to believe very deeply, very passionately. The thing that drew me here as a company and what I still continue to see. And in fact, I think that my vision of who we are and what we, what we can become gets clearer every day is, is the fact that we are the best home-based business fitness company in the entire world. We are positioned in that space. We have that opportunity. And, and it's, you know, we, we are a company that was started by being a TV company, right? We sold infomercials on TV. And, and, and Carl and John, as they've created this company, thought, how do we reach people? How do we connect people to sell fitness products so they get results in their life? And so they launched that, and, and, and it worked. And, you know, it did a pretty good job. Creates a lot of brand equity, a lot of a lot of information out there. But it wasn't until it wasn't until we created the coach network and we tapped into coaches. Okay, who have the ability to relate and to connect and to impact and to share and to create accountability and help people in their business where, there's, where they can share the nutrition, they can share the fitness programs, where they can share, um, uh, they can create recognition, where there are rewards and compensation, all of those things that fold together in this ball create this tremendous opportunity. And it wasn't until we did that that this thing has really taken off and creates this tremendous opportunity, okay, that's in front of you. So here's the deal. Maybe point one about what I think great leaders possess, okay? Great leaders understand, okay? They see what the opportunity is and they recognize it for what it is. And if in your business, if where you are in your career, if you don't recognize what we have as this huge elephant, this tremendous opportunity, okay, that is creating all sorts of possibilities in your life, then you need to sit back, take a step back, you need to sit down, and you need to develop with great clarity what this is, what it looks like, and develop an ability, an ability to articulate that. Because leaders have to have that in order to create vision, okay? In order to create that passion that they need, that people to lead themselves, 
and particularly lead themselves in the tough times and to lead other people that will give people the, the, the strength to follow them and, and, and want to create a, you know, the wants to follow you. Now, um, Jeff talked for a moment about, about Team Cup and you guys are all on Team Cup. So again, I'm preaching a bit to the choir, but here's the deal in the company. And I just posted this on the walls for five stars and above this morning is that is we look at where we are in our business. January is a great month. And, and typically, here's what happens. January is a great month. Volume's up. Checks are up. Um, uh, people are happy. Put smiles on people's faces. Okay? Then what happens is people get kind of happy and kind of con content. Um, they relax. They take the foot off the accelerator. They stop doing the things that created success for them. And then what happens is volume goes down. Checks goes down. Um, the, the, the smiles start to kind of dissipate a little bit. And then there's this chatter, okay, that starts to surface on the team pages and on your team pages. And it goes something like this. Geez, what's going on? My volume's down. Is your volume down? You know, and, and, and you'll start to hear that. And the real key is it's not what's going on. The real question is what's not going on in the business. And typically that is something where the coaches, the leaders have stopped leading and have taken the foot off the accelerator and doing those things that create this flywheel that keeps turning, that creates success. January, we expect things to be pretty good. First of the year, people want to have great success. They want to have fitness goals. They have their New Year's resolution. You expect it to be good. But one of the reasons we put Team Cup into play is not because there's great tier prizes and you know stuff you can get and, and hold the cup and maybe fly to Santa Monica and all that kind of stuff. That's, th th those are all little tiny things. The real reason, the real reason behind this cup is because it creates an opportunity for you to leverage the opportunity with yourself as a leader and with other people to create leadership moments. And one of the things we see consistently consistently is that after a team cup month, during a team cup month, we see volume go up, we see checks go up, we see leadership ranks advance, we see people advancing. Um, there are the, all of the positive indicators come out of this business. And so you've, if, you're, if you're not leading a cup or your coaches aren't on a team cup, I'm gonna challenge you right now as a leader, get them on a cup because that is key to generating more success for them. So, um, I, and you guys are on a cup, so I'm, I know I, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, but it's part of this flywheel that keeps the thing moving. And if you see where we are as a company, one of the things that we do is we insert these little moments throughout the year for coaches to leverage. There's, there's Team Cup in, in February. We have our success club trips. We have our Super Saturdays. We have our summits. We have our leadership. We have other Team Cups. All of those things are meant to keep the thing going. I, I don't know how many of you remember the old Hot Wheels uh, little deal. Some of you are shaking your head going, yeah, I remember the little Hot Wheels, little cars that went around a track, right? And you remember that um, you could get, I don't even know what it was called. I should go Google and find out what the name was. But there was this little slingshot um, wheel, the set of wheels that would spin. And what would happen is that the, the car would go around the track and it would come around and it start to slow down. And then it would hit these wheels and it would go and it would fly. It would be, it would just be flung out of those things. That's the purpose of team cup. It's to being that slingshot, that accelerator in your business. So this is an opportunity that leaders recognize. Leaders will look at it and say, how do I dig the hole? How do I get in front of this thing? Take advantage of, of what this is. So now I'm going to move quickly. You need to meet somebody there, but so four characteristics, I think, of leaders that as you lead your teams, regardless of whether it's in a team cup or not, I'm going to call them the four E's, okay? Here's the first one. The first one is energy. Leaders have energy, okay? And they have more energy than the people around them, or at least they try to have more energy. And they do the things that will create energy for themselves. And as importantly as doing the things that create energy, they stop doing the things that suck out energy. When you think about the principle behind energy, here's what happens. When, when you think about creating energy, 
okay? Water, what do they do? They take this big river and they condense it down and they push it through this small funnel. They simplify, they condense, they compress. It gets very, very simple and that creates this energy. And, and that same principle applies to you in your business, that as you simplify and as you compress and you take away things that, that it may be cleaning out your sock drawer, okay? Seriously, it may be cleaning out a kitchen door, stuff like that that sucks it out of you. You've got to get those out of your life because leaders have energy. Now, it doesn't stop there. The second D is this. Leaders are energizers, okay? Now, you can go, oh, that's cute. You know, I've got energy. Of course, I'm going to become an energizer. Yeah, not so quick, okay? It's a little bit more cute than just cute, okay? Great leaders, good leaders, recognize their role as an energizer, and what they do is they're disciplined in their approach, they're thoughtful about their approach, and they understand when they need to insert themselves as energizers. I think a great example is, is if you get into the second week of the cup, okay, for example, you, you know, everyone's all ready to go, they're rah, rah, let's go, sis, boom, ba, kind of a deal, you know, the coaches are going to fall from heaven into our laps. Well, you quickly realize that's not going to happen. And the headwinds kind of come, you get a little bit discouraged. That is a time when a leader knows that beforehand what they need to do is in week two or week three or week four, whatever you, when you think about you're going to need that, you're going to become the energizer. And maybe it's a, it's a, it's a disciplined, very intentional attaboy at a girl. Maybe it's a bottle of wine. Maybe it's a, you know, maybe it's a candle. Maybe it's a, you know, a phone call or a, you know, a, it's a trip to T, whatever it is, okay? It's, it's something that you have thought about beforehand and, and have been very disciplined in your approach and intentional in what you do as an energizer for the business. You know when the critical moments are in a coach's existence where you need to be active and create influence on your behalf. And you also know the times when you can let it roll a little bit and then insert yourself. Number two, coach, great, great leaders are energizers. The third is leaders have to have an edge, okay? Have to have an edge. They have to have an attitude. They've got to know that they're standing apart from the rest. They've got to be bold. They've got to be dramatic. This is a time when you've got to kind of paint yourself in a corner. You got to burn the, you got to burn the boats. You've got to be willing to put something out there that gives you an edge where you're all in in your business. And people around you have to feel that. You have to be willing to accept or to, to say, this isn't acceptable. This is where we're going. you People want to be led. Most people want to be led, but they want, but they need you to pull them out of some of those tough, some of those tough places. And they may come kicking, screaming, whining, moaning, groaning, but typically they want to get out of there. Number four, leaders execute. These first three things are all great, right? You know, to, to, to have energy and to do all this kind of stuff and to be thinking beforehand, but you've got to be willing to execute. You have to be disciplined in your approach. You've got to be willing to take the bull by the horns and execute the plan that you've put into place. You've got to know what the end of the road looks like. You've got to know that these next 29 days in February, we're going to get to here and this is what it's going to look like and this is what our plan looks like. If not, you're like the Alice in Wonderland story, you know, where they approach the Cheshire cat and says, you know, where, you know, where do you, where do you want to go? And, and, and because I really don't know where I want to go. Said, then it doesn't really matter, you know, which road you take because they'll all take you there. You know, you've got to be very intentional about where you're going and execute. And, and so those four characteristics, I'm watching the clock here because I've got about six minutes and, I've, and I want to share a couple more little things. So what I've, what I've learned from successful team cups is this, right now, four or five days beforehand, what they're doing with their teams is they are sitting down and they are scheduling, they're sitting down with their spouses, their partners, their teammates, their kids and saying, this is what the next 29 days are going to look like. These are the headwinds that are going to come against us. How are we going to behave when um, it gets tough? How are we going to behave when, you know, we want to go out and do this and, and this comes forth? They always beforehand have planned and scheduled what it's going to look like and anticipated, you know, what's going to come down the road. So this is the time, even if you're not the team leader, to, to make sure that it happens. Okay, last couple of thoughts. And this is a bit of a gut check, okay? It's this, are you interested or are you committed? 
really, okay, really. Mike Krzyzewski, great coach for, for Duke, uh, you know, phenomenal. He makes a distinction between the two, and he says this. Make a distinction between being interested and being committed. When you're interested in doing something, you do it only when it's convenient. Only when it's convenient. When you're committed, <clears throat> you follow through no matter what. No excuses. You've got to ask yourself, am I serious about this? Am I committed to it? Because if all you're willing to do on this is really treat it as a hobby, then you shouldn't expect anything other than hobby results. If you're serious about this being a business, if you're serious about being here a year from now or five years from now, <clears throat> then you'll make the moments count, okay? You'll be where the puck is going to be. You'll dig a hole for the opportunity that you're going to capture that opportunity. One more quote, a couple more quotes. <clears throat> Life is a series of near misses, but what we ascribe to luck is not luck at all. <clears throat> Get this. It's seizing the day and accepting responsibility for your future. <clears throat> accepting responsibility for your future. It's seeing what other people don't see and pursuing that vision no matter who tells you not to. If you want to achieve widespread impact and lasting value, be bold. Okay, be bold. <clears throat> if you want change, if you want to change the fruits of what you're getting, then you've got to change the roots. You've got to put some of these things into place. You know, the things we're talking about aren't sexy. They're not uh, overly dramatic, really. But the results that they can create when you execute well can create very dramatic results. Okay, but it starts with assuming responsibility. One last little piece. I love this. It, it, it's a poem. It's called the Anglican Bishop Poem. Okay, um, so I guess it's about an Anglican bishop, right? It's on, it was found on a tombstone somewhere, <clears throat> and it talks about personal responsibility. It goes like this: When I was young and free, and my imagination had no limits, I dreamed of changing the world. As I grew older and wiser, I realized the world would not change, and I decided to shorten my sight somewhat and change only my country. But it, too, seemed immovable. As I entered my twilight years, in one last desperate attempt, I sought to change only my family, those closest to me. But alas, they would have none of it. And now, here I lie on my deathbed and realize, perhaps for the first time, that if only I'd changed myself first, then by example, I may have influenced my family. And with their support, I may have bettered my country. And who knows, I may have changed the world. It starts with you guys. It starts with us. I, I have high dreams, high hopes sometimes, and, and I, I want to change my kids, and I want to change my family. And, and I realize when I want to expand my circle of influence as a leader, what I've got to do is I've got to change myself. I've got to improve myself. And when I start to do that, what happens is my circle of influence expands, and the leadership and the followership followership follows on this. So guys, um, we're, we're out of time, but, but let me just, just say this. It's, it's, I, I look at you guys and I am serious. I, I look at your faces and, and this gives me this opportunity literally to look into your homes. Okay. And kind of look into your eyes. And it's this humbling moment for me. Cause as I look at you guys, you all of a sudden you go, man, there's people here with kids. There's people here that are, you know, they've got laundry. They're trying to do, they're trying to cook dinner. They're trying to multitask. They're trying to manage life and grow this business and, and, and do great things, you know, in, in their lives. And it just makes me realize what a humbling or what a courageous business this is, you know, and how much you guys do. And I want you to know that that I don't take it for granted what you guys do. Um, it's, it's a courageous business. And, and you guys have to pull yourself up by the bootstraps every single day and go out there and put your own credibility, you know, put your hope you know, out there and, and, and test yourself and test your knowledge. And, and you know, we have these little calls and you go, okay, what do I do with this? I've got nobody else here to talk to, you know, kind of thing. And it, it, it's, it's challenging. My responsibility. I, this, this helps me become even more responsible that, that we will make the decisions and try and lead this company in a way that, that when you go out there and you put your credibility on the line, you put your reputation on the line, that, that this will be a company that, that can be part of that big opportunity 
that creates possibilities for you in your life. And so I just want to say thank you for being on the call. Thank you for being who you are. And um, there's lots of good stuff out there. So anyway, Jeff, um, I'm out of time. I'm supposed to be on a Spanish call, but thank you for jumping on. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you so much for taking time. We all very much appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I know I took a, a lot of notes and there's a lot of things that I'm going to be uh, um, working on myself. I'm sure you'll make sure of that too, Jeff. Um, you know, some of the things that I was thinking, I was thinking about, I like when you said anticipate where the opportunities are. And like, like he mentioned, Teep Cup is that one of those opportunities, make sure you're present and participate. Um, you know, making sure that we're interested, checking ourselves, are we interested or committed? And, or, and, and, and hopefully we're all at that point where we're committed in our business. Really quick. Kids getting in trouble. Um, really quick to end. Um, okay. I just want you guys to know all this hard work, all the effort, all the planning, the things that you're doing for your coaches, everything you're doing right now is worth it and will pay off. And you'll start to see that in your business. And pushing towards goals and accomplishments is, is very important. And um, we wanted to share with you a, a video. If you are, you are at NLC, you've seen this video. If you've been on the region pages, you may have watched it as well. Um, but we wanted to share this video of, of some coaches that have been pushing and working towards a goal and to show you some of the reactions that they, that they had as they found out well, in this situation, they were finding out that they were elite coaches. So we want to share this with you really quickly. And then after this video, we'll let you guys get on to your families and to your life. So let me share my screen really quickly. Let's make it big. Are you able to? Yep. I'm shaking, like, I didn't think I was going to do it. I'm shaking.